hello again. So, today, what day is it today? The 9th of December. I'm eating grapes and apples and a strawberry actually. So 9th of December today, um, I probably have a few updates actually. I have had three appointments this week and I went back to work this week. So it's been quite hectic. And today is Thursday and I've also got a little work Christmas like afternoon tea because to be fair, a lot of the time, even pre-COVID with work, a lot of people, you've got a really mixed age group, so people don't necessarily want to go on nights out. So we've decided we would go for afternoon tea and there's a few ladies within work who are also pregnant, myself and another girl I know for sure, and there was a couple of ladies on mat leave. So I know for a fact like there's people who wouldn't necessarily want to go on nights out and stuff. So I've got that on Saturday as well, Saturday afternoon. I think by the time Sunday comes, I am going to be so tired. Like, I already look so tired just now. I am currently 21 weeks and four days. I know, I, do you know, I've watched so many fucking influencers or vloggers and all that shit over the years and then when they become pregnant, they start speaking in this weeks and days or months language, which is mental. It's roughly about four and a half months to going on five months. That's what I am at the moment. But basically, the appointment at the start of the week on Tuesday was my second, third, fourth, maybe fifth scan. Um, I'm so I was supposed to get a 20 week scan, which is routine for all women in Scotland. But I got one done 18 weeks a little earlier, and they said let's bring you back around 21 weeks just to double check because even in that short time, like the heart changes and things. So they wanted to see baby's heart. A little bit further on not that there was anything wrong with the, the 20, 18 week scan but they just said it's better to see it once they're a little bit older it's routine that you see around 20 to 21 weeks so let's do that so done that on tuesday and it was really good it was really nice baby is looking very healthy has a uh, how do i say this it has normal sized everything um that's what they kept saying in the scan like normal sized head good sized tummy like normal sized belly um heart all looked really good and basically they also what else did they tell me oh so when i was in the scan actually i was sort of around about half 11 i want to say is sometimes when little bear is becoming a bit more active and it's very difficult i've not really mentioned anything about movements because a lot of the time i'm like is it? Is that what it is? And even at like 14 or 16 weeks when I was in for appointments and seen midwives and stuff, they were like, um, like, because I see a midwife before I see a consultant. So they would always ask me about it and I'd be like, meh, just feels like I need a fart. <laughs> and a lot of the time it would be followed by a fart. So I never ever thought it was actually movements. But I want to say around about week 19 to 20, that's just like last week, I started to feel really obvious. Like, I just was like, that must be what I think it is. Um, and when we were at the scan on Tuesday, they were so active. Um, they did not like being proked and podded. At, uh, basically, when she had the ultrasound probe on, you could see them going like, oh, like, leave me alone, I'm sleeping. And I was like, oh my God, Alan's like, well, it's definitely like you then. <laughs> Because I'm not a morning person, uh, even though I have to get up for work at half five sometimes, I am not a morning person. So uh, yeah, they were really active and that was nice. And it was nice to be able to like correlate that is that feeling and that is what it is. Um, and at the moment, now at 21 weeks, I feel like there's quiet days and there's really active days. So I was a little worried about that and I did ask the consultant when i seen them on tuesday is that normal and she said at this time of gestation that's very normal so they don't have a pattern just yet um but yeah so some days i'm like oh i've not felt much today at all and then other days like on monday when i went back to work i was obviously up at half five went to work about six half no sorry half six then was at work at seven o'clock by the time it came to 11 o'clock in the morning, I was sitting with a manager doing some risk assessments and stuff. I was like, oh my God, this child is going crazy in my stomach because it probably is thinking, why are we up at this time? We don't do this, this is not normal. Um, and probably just speaking to a lot more people because in day to day life at the moment, especially in the morning, unless I'm meeting a friend in the afternoon or something, I'm not speaking to people at the time. Whereas if you're up early 
in work for seven, you're chatting to people, you can probably hear a lot more. Um, so definitely have noticed that, but then like today, it's, they've been quite quiet. They've not really said too much, but I have been reassured that that's quite normal. Um, and I'm using an app at the moment called Peanut, which is for pregnant ladies. I'll put a link below if anybody's interested. I have found it quite useful. I'll probably talk about it a bit more in the sit down update because I'm going to do like sit down updates for each trimester and then do these vlogs as well. Um, so basically I think it's really helpful because you can kind of put a message up, a post up or whatever and say, oh, I'm feeling a little anxious about this. Has anybody else experienced something like that? And so as soon as I put up the post saying, like I had a really quiet day at the weekend, Monday, Tuesday, they were so active. Yesterday was a little quieter and today they're really quiet. And they were like, happened to me, there was no regular patterns until about 28 weeks, like don't worry about it, blah, blah, blah. And just having the reassurance of like, you know, 10 other women saying, yeah, that's quite normal. And having the consultant obviously have said that it's quite normal. It's just nice, it's a nice thing to have. Um, especially if you maybe you're somebody who doesn't have people who've been pregnant around you. I do, I'm lucky that way. But it's just nice to put it out there and know you're not on your own with it. So that was nice. Um, and then yesterday, Wednesday, I had my MRI for my heart and I have to say that was horrible. And I've had, I don't know how many MRIs for my heart in my life. Loads of them, hundreds of them. Obviously, usually the MRI is the one when you go into the tube. CT is like a little donut, it's quite narrow and you kind of stick out either side of it but the MRI is the one you go inside the whole tube. And I've had ones done in my heart loads. You lie on your back, you have to listen to some headphones, sometimes they put music on for you. You can be in the tube for up to an hour, it's a long time to have to lie in a very compact space but I've had it a million times had no worries about going for it, thought this will be fine. But because now with the gestation that I'm at, I can't lie on my back for that length of time, they put me on an angle, but I can't completely lie on my side because they have to get like photographs or scans and images of my heart. So I was at this like odd tilted angle and they propped me up with pillows as best they could and all that kind of stuff. But then when you're, you're in something for an hour, a tube for an hour not being able to move, and my hips were agony. That is something that I have experienced and actually ended up having an online class with a physiotherapy team uh, because my hips, um, it's pelvic girdle pain, whatever you want to call it. During the day when I'm walking about, it's fine, but when I have to lie in one position for any length of time, it is fucking agony. Um, and I've got little exercises that I do. I've got an exercise ball that you would usually use for yoga. Like I had that from years ago. So I sit on that sometimes and that helps like with that area. But this MRI yesterday was, oh, it was fine for maybe the first half an hour. And then I was just was like, oh, towards the end, I think the last 15 minutes of it, I was almost in tears. I was so sore. It was also really loud, which I know MRIs are really loud. Like, I I'm aware of that. I've had them before. I work in a hospital environment. And they do give you earplugs and you put the headphones on so they can speak to you and listen to the instructions and maybe sometimes they put music on for you. But it was so loud. I just thought, oh my God, what is this little bear thinking is happening? Because I can't speak and say, you're all right in there. Sorry, I'm very emotional at the moment and yesterday was something that really, really upset me and I don't know why it upset me. Obviously I'm hormonal, but it just made me think, oh God, just let them know. I'm so sorry I had to put them through that. It was so loud. I couldn't speak. I had to like stop breathing at times again, all normal things that I've done before. They ask you to breathe out, they ask you to breathe in and hold your breath till they get certain pictures. And I just thought they must think, what's going on? Like, what's happening out there? And I just think, if it wasn't for me, and my shitey heart or my shitey body, <laughs> they wouldn't have had to have went through that. And Alan's like, don't be stupid. And I kind of know <laughs> in my head I'm being a bit ridiculous, but it really upset me. And even now, thinking about it, upsets me 
because I don't want them to have to go through all the shit I've had in my life with health stuff and I know they'll never even remember, not really, but just that I had to put them through that because of me. <laughs> that really upset me yesterday. <laughs> so that was tougher than I thought it would be. Really weird because I, I didn't have any fears about going, I've done it a million times, but it was just tough. And then when I couldn't move, so the last bit is the longest, like they take loads and loads and loads of pictures. I think it's so like they get moving images almost. And it just felt like it went on forever. And I was just like lying in the tube, like, oh, please, please, like let this finish. Because it was so sore. I was just so uncomfortable. And the, the staff were wonderful. Like they couldn't have been, they were like, you've done so well, like. God, I'm so sorry it took longer than we thought it would. Like, they were lovely, like, they were great. But it just wasn't a very nice thing to have to go through as a pregnant person. Just didn't like it. But anyway, ooh, that's me <laughs> having a bit of a cry again. <laughs> and then this morning, I had the dentist, which is fine. They just were like, yep, yeah, your teeth are fine, come back for six months. Uh, in Scotland as well, you, I think in the UK, but don't quote me, you don't have to pay for any dental treatment while you're pregnant and up until your child is a year old, I think. I didn't need anything done anyway, but just thought you might want to know that. I don't know if people already do or if you're watching and you're from another part of the world, maybe you don't know. Uh, so yeah, don't have, you don't have to pay for any dental treatment for up to a year while your baby's a year old. Um, but that was fine. And then I went for my COVID booster. Controversial, I know. Uh, they're really pushing. Uh, for ladies to go and get their COVID jabs, pregnant ladies, because actually they're finding that quite a lot of the ICU admissions, pregnant ladies in ICU are the people who haven't been vaccinated. So they're pushing for it. But I think due to, like at the start, there was a lot of Dubai, like pregnant women weren't being called for it and all that kind of stuff. So I think that was probably an ethical dilemma that whoever you know governments world health organization stuff like that had to counteract but as far as i know now like the royal um what you call it obstetricians midwives everything are all saying advising that you do go for it and personally this is a very personal thing to me so please i don't need any comments telling me what i've done to my child because i've got a covid vaccine personally for me with the health connotations and the things that I have going on in my life, if I was to catch COVID, it would probably be much more detrimental to me to catch COVID and then end up in ICU or something and detrimental to my baby than it would be to have the vaccine. And I've already had two of the vaccines. This was my booster. So I'm not feeling particularly bad about it. It was the right choice for me make your own decision on it. I would never force anybody to do anything. I think that, you know, it is really scary, especially as a pregnant woman, you're like, oh, I'm not sure if I wanna do that. I'll maybe wait till after. I've had my baby and then get my COVID vaccine and I think it's completely, absolutely independently up to you. Uh, I just felt for me personally, having already had two of the vaccines and having the health conditions that I have, it was the right choice for me um, because I don't want to end up, and I work in healthcare. So I just thought it was the right choice for me and that's what I've decided and right choice for my baby because if I was to catch it, uh, whether it's one of the new variants or the old COVID-19, old COVID-19 as if it's old hat now, then I just think, yeah, I would rather have the vaccine and be able to fight it than not, you know? So, but again, completely up to yourselves decide what you want to do I don't want anybody like coming at me in the comments section because it's my body it's my baby um the other thing I was going to tell you about is my sensor or my transmitter for my pump is now in full working order there was quite a few teething problems the first week to 10 days I wasn't a fan of it <laughs> at all I've got the Medtronic Guardian to go in my Medtronic pump and as you can see at the moment it says Oh, hide my face, 5.4. And you can see there, like, see the little blue dot there? I had a snack and it went up a little bit and it's came back down to about 5.4. So I actually think it is really useful now that it seems to be working. 
now that it seems to be working. The other thing that I find is really useful, I think I maybe already said this in another vlog is, so as you can see here, over the last 24 hours, see those two like gold bars in the middle there? So that's like 24 hour clock at the top and those two gold bars in the middle. That's where my blood sugar was actually going low and the pump decided to stop giving me insulin to avoid a hypo, which doesn't always work. I found I've still had the odd hypo here and there, but it's actually really effective, especially for overnight I've found. So I'm starting to enjoy it now. I'm a terrible one for change. I hate when things change and then I'm like, oh, I don't like this. This isn't what I'm used to. Uh, I find it quite hard sometimes, but teething problems that start like four of them failed and I had to phone Medtronic and be like, what is going on here? Uh, but I think, I think we've got on a smooth path now and it seems to be working. They work a week at a time, uh, so I have to recite them weekly, but seems to be going okay. I do feel like my insulin requirements are increasing slightly now. Um, certainly some things I'm eating, it's strange because I could eat something with the exact same amount of carbohydrates in it but if one's kind of more like a cheat meal like a more of a fatty thing like a takeaway and one's like a healthy option of carbohydrate but still really high in carbohydrate like a whole wheat pasta or something my blood sugar seems to be much more stable if I have the whole wheat pasta as opposed to the cheat meal obviously but if I have like a cheat meal sometimes I'm finding and it's difficult because actually we went out for dinner a couple of weeks back maybe even a week ago and my blood sugar jumped all the way up to 19 but I also think the sensor was just not working quite right but um jumped way up and I have never seen blood sugars like that in Christ knows how long years um and then so I was like oh god my insulin requirements maybe jumped up and then we actually did have a takeaway with Alan's mum and dad at the weekend what did we have was it a curry we had a take, yeah it was, it was a curry. We had a curry at the weekend and actually I took the insulin for that probably around about the same amount of like carbohydrates and stuff and it just kind of goes quite smooth and then came down a little on the low side. I actually ended up having to have something after my dinner as well because I was feeling a bit low. So it's not, it's just, it's the way diabetes is. It's never by textbook and that's why I think, especially as a nurse as well, and as somebody who's had diabetes for so, so long, it can be so frustrating because a lot of medical and clinical people, experts that you speak to, are brilliant, but don't live with it. And then they just can't really see, like a lot of them are very textbook, like this is how this works, or this is how it worked for this person. I'm like, yeah, that person isn't me. That's not how it works for me. And I am lucky, like I've been so supported throughout my kind of diabetes journey and my team's really good and they've been they've been good with the pregnancy and stuff but yeah just sometimes you just want to like say to them fuck off like <laughs> you don't know what you're doing right because I've done this very long, fucking longer than you've been in the job and some people obviously not a few people much older who've been doing specialist diabetes roles for a long time but as a healthcare professional myself I'm like going to stop telling me what the textbook says because that's not how it works for me so that can be quite frustrating sometimes but anyway I'm kind of baffling on now so that's it for this week next week will be week 22 I have another appointment with diabetes I think that's all though I'm getting a haircut thank fucking lord look at this hair there's like no colour left in it look at that and it desperately desperately needs cut it's so so long so, getting a haircut next week. I'm in work on Monday. Um, the way it worked out is that I'm actually only going to have to be doing one day a week or two half shifts a week because of my annual leave. Sorry. So that's really good. Uh, so I still get to see people if, again, COVID crops up, anything to do with this new Omicron variant, all that kind of stuff, I'm not to be at work. But at the moment, it was quite nice to be at work last week. Uh, on Monday, I'm going back tomorrow. It was quite nice. Uh, nice to just speak to people, see people, tell people my news, because not like that many people had seen me. So, work on Monday, haircut on Tuesday. Um, 
diabetes team on Wednesday and then Thursday my mum's coming down. I think we're going to go pram scoping, pram shopping, scoping out what we want. We did do that last week but we had a look and we kind of narrowed it down to a couple. I was looking at the Ickle Bubba range online. They had great Black Friday deals. I thought it looked amazing. I liked the colour. Thought it looked like a neat package. Blah, blah, blah. We, when we went in store to somewhere, when I seen it, I was like, oh, I'm really glad I didn't order that. It was fine. It was nice. But it was so fiddly to fucking get on and off. Like, you don't think about these things, like changing a bassinet or a carry cot or whatever to the other stuff, to a car seat. All that kind of stuff. Like, you don't really think about it until you try these things or how you fold it up. Is it possible to do one-handed? Can you do it this way? Can you do it? Like, it's very difficult to even think about that till you get into a shop and start trying things. So, actually, once I'd seen it in store, I thought, thank Christ, I didn't order anything like that. So, we've ruled it down to two at the moment, maybe three. Uh, which is one is a Nuna, one is a Baba Bing, and what was the other one I liked? Up a baby, maybe. I looked at jewels. I liked some of the jewel stuff, but they're just so expensive. It's just we don't want to pay that much for a pram or a buggy. It's just not for us. But um, we're gonna do that with my mum next on Thursday. Well, I will be. Alan will be at his work. Uh, and yeah. So then we make decisions. Some people, certain shops we went into, they said that um, there was up to a 12 week wait for your pram or your buggy. And at the moment, I'm actually like, oh, right, okay. So I actually have to think about this just now. I think in normal terms, pre-COVID, that wasn't a big issue, but now you actually are getting like, I mean, so other places like online and stuff are like, we could have it to you for January, fine. Which I don't really want to get it too early. And I think I'll probably keep it at my in-laws if I'm honest with you. But I just, I just kind of was like, oh, I didn't realise these things. And even Alan, when he was out the other week, was like, I'm really glad that I came out because he was kind of just like, yeah, that one looks nice. The the one Echo Bubba that I'd been looking at, and I thought, oh, it's too early. I'm not, I'm not going to do it yet. Um, I think if I'd ordered that, he'd have just been like, yeah, seems fine, no problem. And then actually, when he was in the shops and he was trying to do things and put them up and down and making decisions and even things like making sure that the, the handle length is tall enough because he's six foot four and I'm only five foot four. Like making sure that the handle is long enough so he's not bending over to push a pram or anything. Like even things like that, you don't even think about it. So he was actually really glad they came out and I was glad we went out and looked at our different places. We went somewhere in East Kilbride, I think it was called Jan Stewart. We went to Mamas and Papas. We went to Smith's. Um, we did try Halfords because I know they do stuff online, but there was nothing in the shop. It was just car seats, so we couldn't see anything there. Um, but there's not that many like places you can really go anymore. So that's what we've done. Uh, and that's where I'm going to leave it this now. And I will come back and update you maybe in a couple of weeks. I don't think I've got too much. We'll maybe put a little bit of footage of us pram shopping uh, or pram scoping. But um, I don't think I'll have too much else to add as long as everything keeps going smoothly so that's it at the moment nothing else to say i'm actually going to go and have a really nice hot shower because the boiler is broken it has been broken for fucking three nearly four weeks and i'm like oh it has been ordered eventually the actual parts came in for it the actual boiler came in to get a new one and now we just need to wait for the guy to be free to actually come and fit our boiler which I'm hoping is going to happen at the start of next week because I'm fucking freezing. So I'm going to go and have a hot shower, do my hair a little bit and maybe film a proper YouTube video. We shall see. Mm -hmm.